goodbye. And then we, we, had, we, we got the chance to look forward to a new destination, a new life. And, and in so many ways, baptism is a lot like that. There are things in our life that we are called to part ways from. The Apostle Paul would say, put to death whatever belongs to your earthly nature. To leave it behind, leave it in the grave, and look forward to your new life in Christ, our new destination. And in baptism, it's not ultimately about our decision. It is, it is that, but it's ultimately about bringing our lives into alignment to Jesus and what Jesus has done for us. And so what I want to do is I want to read a few scriptures and just make a few brief observations. Uh, in Romans 6, Paul gives us a profound a visual of Christ's death and what that means uh, for our baptism. And here's what he says in, in Romans 6, verse 3. He says, Or, do you not, uh, or do, don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism in, uh, into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with Him in a death like His, we will certainly also be united with Him in a resurrection like Him. For we know that our old self was crucified with Him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, and that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who, is, who has died has been set free from sin. And we can read on in this passage, but Paul's point is pretty clear that what we are doing in baptism is we are symbolizing and visualizing the essence of what we believe about the gospel in the most experiential kind of way. That just as Jesus died on the cross, he was buried in a tomb, and he was raised from the grave, we demonstrate our trust, our faith in Jesus by dying to ourselves burying it in this watery grave and we are raised up out of the water and we are given a new life in Christ. And, and the beauty of that is that as we proclaim ourselves dead to sin, Christ sets us free from sin's grip on our life. Sin no longer has mastery over our life. Christ does. He runs the show. Jesus is our master. Which brings us to the next observation about baptism. And that baptism is not simply in our individual decision. It is us making a public commitment to Christ and His church. Now Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, that for we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body. And as we begin to kind of contemplate the meaning of baptism and what that means for us to unite ourselves to Christ and His church, we also are to recall um, the placement that Jesus put on baptism and the importance that He gave to it. And when we turn back the pages of the gospel, we learn that Jesus, He began His public ministry after He got baptized. And then at the, uh, after He rises from the dead, He gathers His crew together and He says, Hey, I want you to make uh, disciples of all nations. Um, baptizing them and teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you. And as I reflect on the meaning that Jesus gives to it, and what sticks out to me is that baptism is not just about us symbolizing and expressing our faith in the gospel. It's not just about us publicly committing ourselves to Christ and His church. But baptism is also us being commissioned to serve Jesus in his mission, in his ministry. And so, as I get ready to invite um, um, those to get baptized, I want to encourage you not simply to feel the reassurance of God's grace to you, but to remember that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And it begins with uh, the beginning of the journey. And baptism symbolizes that beginning. It symbolizes our new birth. But it is ultimately to launch us on this journey of following and serving Jesus. So Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Uh, the new creation to come, the old is gone, the new is here. So Noah Swift, would you uh, um, come forward? I'm going to uh, pass the mic to you and um, give, you, give you a chance to say a few words. You can come uh, why I'm getting baptized is because uh, it's what God wants me to do, and it, I feel like it's the right thing to do. And Isaiah 41.10 says that, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41.10.
I want to get baptized because, um, because, uh, because uh, Jesus is my Savior and I want to follow him for all of the days of my life. I'd like to get baptized today because I feel like this is the next step in my faith that I'd like to take and I have been wanting to share my devotion to Christ with the community we have here at Cornerstone. Uh, I want to get baptized today because I am embarking on a new journey in marriage with Elijah. Um, and I want to be fully committed to the Lord the entire step of the way, so. Emma, because you want to publicly be identified with Jesus Christ and his life, and death, burial, and resurrection, and God hides you from the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I was actually supposed to get baptized last year. Uh, last March actually, but because of COVID it was canceled, which was a really big disappointment. However, I'm really thankful for this year of growth that has um, reassured me in this decision and made me more confident in it. Um, and I'm really blessed and thankful to be walking with um, the Lord in each season of my life. Allie, because you're a profession of faith in Jesus Christ, the fact that you want to be identified with the public, his life, death, and resurrection. Awesome. Well, congratulations and welcome to the beginning of the journey. And as you guys commit yourself to Christ and to his church, the church commits themselves to growing you and uh, mentoring you and discipling you.